so after I did the tidal rave shoot, I had a lot of requests where people wanted me to show them how I went about editing the image. I actually want to show you guys how the image was shot and how the push processing happened in Capture One and also in Photoshop. I think most of the job was done in Photoshop because of the client's, should I say client's request, the things the clients needed to see on my photos or on the photos I shot. So this is somewhat another way of showing you how to edit commercial pictures for a billboard. Because at the end of the day, whichever client I worked for wanted the pictures to look saturated and all. So the ones I provided weren't too saturated. The ones I saw them put on the billboard become more became more saturated. So, I mean, it's just the perks of working with these billboard commercials. And depends on the one you're working with. But for this, they needed like more colorful look and the kind of mood board they showed me i realized i had to bring my a game on so i'll show you i'll show you a similar bts i mean it's from the same shoot but not of the same model i shot another model um, let me let me show you i shot this girl this model with the same lighting setup so i used my 8600 with the seven inch cone to light up the face and i use a reflector to bounce back light onto my subject and if you can see on the beach sand you realize the sun is way above their head so it was approaching midday so it was 11 12 and the only way to shoot during 11 12 midday and still get quite an exposure on the face without the shadows dropping down or giving those raccoon eyes which i have almost all the time spoken about when shooting outdoors i had to use a very hard light source and the ad 600 is not as powerful as the sun but i mean it helped in its way looking at this model she had this huge wig on her face and it kind of blocked the sun coming in right from the top this way so the light hitting the face gave us, I mean, a big push. As you can see on the floor, like I said, on the beach sand, you see the shadow right underneath her. So indicating it was 11, 12 midday. Fortunately for me, I used the reflector on her right side instead of her left side as compared to the video I'll be showing you. I used my Canon 5D Mark IV for this and a 24-70 Canon F2.8 mark 2 lens for this shoot so this was shot at iso 100 shutter speed 1 over 2000 and an f-stop of 3.5 at a 35 millimeter focal length my flash power was at 1 over 2 on the ad600 i used the godox s2 trigger to trigger that and what else and i used a seven feet reflector to bounce back light onto it so I have the sun coming in from the top giving me all this rim that I need. I have the, the silver reflector bouncing back light onto her skin for me. And my key light, which is the AD600 with the 7 inch cone hitting the face for me. So if I take a zoom in, we realize that the sun is not really having much effect on her face just because of a huge wig blocking the face. So I did, a quite, I did quite a number of things here in Capture One and I want to show you. I mean, the shoot went great. It was splendid. I had, like, I had all the time I needed to shoot and so far so good. I loved everything that came out from the shoot. I edited this image, I posted it and I, mean, I, got, I got a lot of requests with people telling me to do a video on how I edited this. So I wanted to show you how I shot it and now this is how I edited it. Of course, I'm going to feature my co-styles in there. So I used, let me turn off the remaining layers. And if you've watched my previous video, I think I'm selling my co-styles for Capture One. This is how the raw image came out. And I used my TJD X Pro One co-styles. I, I applied it onto a layer, which gave me this. And the next thing I did was to desaturate the beach sand add a little bit of color grading and tint the sky so here in my color grading after adding my tjd01 x pro one 
I changed the image into the direction I wanted. I mean, I wanted to tan her skin and all. And the kind of tanning I need on her skin is not something I, would, I can achieve here in Capture One just because the sliders in Capture One kind of exaggerates and brings out more blacks and saturation on the skin when you do that you're using the orange sliders. If this is the and I think I did the beach desaturating. If I hold M on the keyboard, you see the max, a linear mask. And all I did was come into my color editor within my yellows. I desaturated this side. So if you take a look at it, it wasn't all the way over there. And I was afraid it was going to touch the skin. So this is all I did in here. And a little bit of color grading. Added some science into my midtones, some purple blue into my shadows, and cool up my highlights. And within my sky, I changed the hue towards the teal hue. I mean, if I exaggerated the sky, if I exaggerated the luminosity over here, this was how the image was going to look. And that's not what I was going in for. The final look was supposed to look like this. That was the brief I was given. So we had to stay within the limit to make sure we weren't breaking the image. So after I did all that with the cool styles and the beach sun, such desaturated and the color grading and the sky tint, that is one advantage of using cool styles in Capture One. You can, you can also apply more adjustments to it after you're done, not as much as Lightroom. And when I came into Photoshop, I did quite a number of things. The first thing I did when I entered into Photoshop was to send the image into Camera Raw. So sending the image to Camera Raw is what I used to achieve this. So this is what I did. Let me turn off the dodge and burn and any other stuff I've done. I duplicated the layer by holding Command J and I held Command Shift and A, which will send you to Camera Raw filter. Or you can just come to the filter and look for Camera Raw filter. And here in Camera Raw filter, I always get away with this when I'm editing dark skin models because I like to hide a lot of luminosity mistakes on the skin by removing the luminosity on the skin in the oranges. So if I want to hide a lot of mistakes, if I don't want to do too much work on dark skin models, all I do, and it is a trick I've taught you guys all the time, all I do is just to reduce the luminosity on the oranges, which of course I've explained most of the time that you have your skin tones within your reds, oranges and yellows. And mostly because reds and yellows give you oranges, majority of it is within your oranges. And take a look at this. When I reduce the luminosity, there I have it. I mean, I've gotten rid of a lot of light disparities, the transitions between highlights and shadows and midtones. I've gotten rid of most of it. And I have like an even toned, and a smooth and easy transition from the highlighted part of the skin into the darker parts of the skin. That is the trick to getting this image into the direction I got it into. I change the hue a little bit because whenever it is I reduce the luminosity of the orange, I tend to have some orange hues in the skin. Then I move the orange hues towards that of the red and the red towards that of the orange. Just, just to unify the hue range after that after this i went into liquify to fix the hair and all to liquify your hair all you have to do is hold command shift and x if you're using mac or control shift x if you're using windows or just come to filter and liquify as you can see here. so you can see the shortcut over here so you hit on liquify and all you do in liquify is to move warp the hair in place so that's what I did to warp the hair in place. All right. This is a tutorial just to show you what I did. So I'm not going to make it perfect because I've already done that and I've posted it and you guys loved it. So like, I mean, it's a long awaited video. Everyone wanted to see how the work was done. I'm getting a lot of people asking me how it was shot and let them know. I'm glad I'm doing this video. It's been long awaited. I like to do videos around the comments you guys give. So if you have any comments at all, just kindly leave it down in the comment section below. It is very important for me because when you interact with me, I'd, I mean, I reply all the time. So why not? So this is a before and after the liquefy. Hit on OK. And this is all I did 
for this particular layer so i'm going to delete this background copy because i've already done that over here and by doing that i removed also i healed whatever it is i needed to heal in the image i had to remove the gentleman over here right and a little bit blemishes on her skin and all and that was it so that's how i ended up getting this skin tone here in photoshop the next thing i had to do was to desaturate the face because the face looked more saturated as compared to the skin then i added skin tone in using solid color adjustment so what i did was to pick up my eyedropper to come back to the background layer and pick i wanted a color to run through i mean a uniform color to run through the image so i picked somewhere here then i selected solid color right then changed it to color after that inverted the mask and painted it on her skin so as you can see you can see my let me delete this because you're not using this i just wanted to show you how it was done if i hold alt on the keyboard or option on the keyboard and click on the mask as you can see this is what i painted in for her skin so if i turn on this mask if i if i turn on this layer if i make visible this layer whatever it is we did on it is applied on her skin we can see my my blending mode is on color and past 11. I added another gradient map with a blending mode of color, but this time around the opacity at 32 is the same. The opacity, the gradient map took the form of uh, my shadows, midtones, and highlights. So whenever you pick your gradient map, from the left you have your shadows. When you pinpoint or when you put a point here in the middle, that is your midtones, and all the way to the far right is your highlights. So if you want to match skin tones also using gradient map all you have to do is make sure within your shadows you go pick up a color representing your shadows pick up a color representing your midtones and the easy trick to midtones is just locate between your highlighted part and your um, shadowy part in between that will be your midtones and your highlight to pick any highlighted with a the color then i apply the same marks from here onto this and that's how i ended up getting this this even tone of color on her skin take notice of the opacity used next i wanted to clean the ground more because one part of it was looking desaturated the other part felt too um, dark and hard color i couldn't do that totally in capture one so i had to come and do it here in photoshop and by doing that i opened up the luminosity of it and that's how I ended up getting this lightness of a ground over here. Next thing I wanted to do was to add contrast to the image because I felt contrast was lost and everything was looking bright and all, with the exception of our model looking darker in there. So a slight escape, as you can see, and that's what it was doing. It brought back the look I was going in for. With respect to making sure my subject was standing out in as much as my subject was dark and my background was bright usually we like to have a darker background brighter subjects i have thought about this with I, I think i taught this in one of my color theory classes where you pit you pit a lighter color against a darker background to make sure that lighter color pops out I mean, same can be said for the opposite. If I take a look at the image and most of the time I'm seeing a lot of bright or bright colors, I mean, my eye will then after the bright move to the darker parts of the image to see, oh, what's in the darker parts? And that is the idea behind this. The idea is to draw your attention after looking at the brighter areas, draw your attention to the darker parts, which is our lovely model over here. So that's what the contrast is doing as you can see so the contrast darkens our subjects and brightens our background because our background is in the whites and in the highlights and our subjects is within the midtones and our darks here in my selective coloring to within my reds i moved the yellows towards the blue a little bit and 
in my blacks i opened up the blacks and added some blues into my i mean i added some yellows into my blacks added some red and cyan into my blacks and this is what's happening so if you take a look at my blacks when i zoom in my main concentration was the hair when i toggle it off there's a bit of purple hue just because of that purple color grading i did in capture one so to get rid of that that is what i used the selective coloring to do next thing i wanted to do was to color grade the background and not my subject so you can see the mask if i hold option and click on the mask you can see the mask i color graded the sub uh, the background i mean blues added some blues added some cyan in the mid tones and in my highlights this is what i did and within my shadows this is what i did it's a subtle change because i reduced the opacity of course so a subtle change in the tint and hue of the background right after that i added i tried dimming down the background and i realized i was defeating the purpose of making sure everything was in the white region and the attention being drawn on my subject so i toggled it off later time when i was saving it and that was all i did in here for the fix so major parts of the work was done in a fix and i mean without dodging and burning and all you can quickly tell this was going to be a banger next you guys know how to dodge and burn i don't have to take you through a whole process of dodging and burning i have a lot of videos on dodging and burning but also if you want to see me dodge and burn um swimwear images just let me know down in the comment section below maybe in the future i might produce a video around that so dodging and burning like i said because i want to get away with a lot i had to darken the skin using the camera raw filter and here in dodging and burning i just you know matched up some skin tones i mean matched up some luminosity and all so if you take a look at the arm if we take a look at the tummy so after losing the highlights on her skin i used another dodge and burning quick copy but this one i think i should rename this to global dodging and burning because it was actually global mm, to bring back highlights and darken some parts so if you can see this is the before this is the after before and after doing a very good job Right after that, I whitened the eyes. Like I said, it was going to be on a billboard. So I whitened the eyes. And after that, I added a little bit of vignette. Not very, very subtle vignette. Then I added some noise. I saved it. And I came back into Capture One. And that was it. Came into Capture One. Did I do anything here in Capture One? I think I did. So let's take a look. We when it comes to the adjustment tab, I added some whites and a little bit of blacks and I reduced the brightness. Like I said before, wanted to pop out the colors just so that the client won't be satisfied. So in all, this is all I did for the editing of this particular image to move from this. So let's start from this. So we move from this. We ended up using the cool styles and a little bit of adjustment in here to send the image from this to this. Then we ended up in Photoshop to make sure it looked like this. Thank you so much for watching in on this video. And if you're interested in getting my cool styles, I'll leave a link down in the description box. I'll probably also link up here a video to how the other cool styles work on your images. If you're a Capture One user, this should work for you and if you're one who likes shooting outdoors it's purposely made for outdoor images so just get yourself one and thank you so much for joining on today's video make sure you subscribe before you leave turn on the bell notification icon and i will see you in my next video peace